Hey friends, thank you very much for dropping by. My name is Patrick God and welcome to a new .NET 7 video. And this time, well, actually it's getting interesting every single time, of course, but now today we've got something, well, something special really. And as you can see in the title, it's about multi-threading in the browser. Not yet with Blazor WebAssembly, but already with WebAssembly. And Blazor is just, well, it's another layer on top, the UI framework using WebAssembly, right? So you cannot use this yet with a Blazor WebAssembly itself, but you can create a WebAssembly browser application and using this one to really use multi-threading, multiple threads for at max, at most, in the browser. Short disclaimer here, it is experimental. So it is not really in .NET 7. You can activate it by downloading the experimental uh, workload for WebAssembly. But now with the second release candidate actually of .NET 7, this came out and there is a great video about this with more demos in the community standup on the .NET channel. I will link to the video somewhere here, info card or the link in the video description where you can have a look. This is done, of course, by the, by the .NET 7 team, but in particular, Lambda Geek or Alexei, kudos to you. The demos were great if you're watching. I, he demonstrated this in, in this video and I think this is just great. And in this tutorial here, it's not really a tutorial. I just want to spread the word and show you what you can do with that as well. I will use some code from the GitHub repository of Alexei and uh, something they used in the actual blog post for the uh, announcement for the new release candidate, the second release candidate of .NET 7. And uh, yeah, I hope that this is interesting for you. For me, it's still kind of confusing multi threadings every time it's still interesting but also confusing magic sometimes but uh, maybe maybe this will be interesting for you if so i would really like to read your thoughts write it down in the comment section and as always guys of course if you learned something and like this video i would really appreciate it if you click the like button and for more.net stuff in your inbox maybe even and more upcoming online courses about dotnet 7 now check out my newsletter Thank you very much for that. And now enjoy the tutorial. All right, so real quick here, you see the blog post for the second release candidate of .NET 7. This is done by Daniel Roth. Hey, Daniel, great post, by the way. And down here, you can see WebAssembly multi-threading experimental. And this is pretty much what we will do here in this tutorial. We will just test this stuff. I just want to spread the word here that this is possible with a web assembly in the browser, not yet Blazor web assembly. I hope this comes then with .NET 8, but uh, for now, this is also already really interesting stuff. And this uh, example here with many other examples uh, that you can also see in the community standup, the third part of the .NET 7 Blazor community standup. Link is anywhere here on the screen, either an info card or in the video description. I will link to these posts here and to the GitHub repository of Lambda Geek. Alexei is his real name. So he did this stuff. Kudos to you. Again, this is really, really great. And uh, I will kind of use this, this code here, maybe change it just a little bit. But in the community standard video, you can also see other really impressive examples with, uh, for instance, calculating uh, matrices while doing some other stuff and ray tracing in the browser. So maybe you just want to have a look. And, and now let's uh, just create the new project, right? So we run, where is it? Here it is on my other screen. There it is. So Visual Studio 2022 is the preview edition and really the latest one so that I can use the, the latest preview SDK, release candidate two. And we want to create, as you can see here already, a WebAssembly browser app, right? So here in the blog post, we see also .NET new WASM browser. So no Blazor this time, no web API. You can just look for here. You can fill it up by C sharp, all platforms, and then WebAssembly. And then you will also see the WebAssembly browser app here. You can also just use uh, VS code for instance for that as well. Uh, but uh, I think this works also just great with Visual Studio 2022. So let's call this WASM multi-threading. Yep, I think that's correct. And we create our new project. And then the very next thing 
we have to do when this project is created. There it is again on my other, other screen. You see not much in there, but we open the package manager console. And in here now, as you can see here, you have to install the, the WASM experimental workload. So this would not work otherwise. I did this already and you can check this with .NET workload list, I think it was, yeah. And here you can see this entry WASM experimental with RC2, got a bunch of other stuff here as well. I think this is all, everything Maui, everything is Maui stuff here. But anyways, this is what you have to do and uh, then we create the WASM browser application and then we have to do some other stuff. Also important, everything is important here, of course, but uh, the next step we can actually take here is installing this package. So we go to the, we right click the project and then go to manage NuGet packages. And then in the browse tab, we look for Microsoft.net WebAssembly threading. Make sure to check include pre-release, otherwise you would not see this and uh, now, as you can see here, just 257 downloads. So again, I really just want to spread the word because this is this is just great stuff, really. So uh, maybe you also want to try this out. This is now installed. Perfect. Let's close this. And the next step actually is we can already enable threads here, or maybe we just show you the error first if we try it with the threads and, uh, well, it is not enabled. And the other thing is just using this code here. So we maybe we can uh, copy and paste some stuff, but first let me just start the application, all right? And so you can see how this WASM browser application looks. This is what is happening now. The, the command line interface here is just, uh, or the terminal is opening, we can copy this URL and just paste it in the browser. And this is the result. Let's also open the console. Hello world, greetings from local host. All right, so let's just minimize this again. And now let's have a look at the code here because actually we got the main J or we start with the HTML maybe. This is the HTML linking the main JS, .NET JS. And here again, the main JS for the scripts. And then in the script, there's lots of stuff happening. I don't understand everything here. So bear with me. I just want to again, show you this, use this example and spread the word that .NET is getting to multi-threading in the browser using web workers. And uh, well, in essence, what's actually happening here we just uh, run the program CS file, right? So when we uh, when we have a look here, here, we see hello world greetings from, and then uh, this is just the current, uh, well, the current place, the current address here in the browser. Okay, so nothing fancy, but now of course we want to use multi-threading. So what we can actually do here, we can first uh, just close this and then actually remove everything here. And well, we can leave this maybe. And regarding the main JS, we have to remove some stuff. So we don't need lots of stuff here. First, the set module imports, we don't need this. We just get the config. So this is also not necessary. This is actually also not necessary. Well, Alexei said, look into the console, so maybe look in the console, there's the magic happening. So we can do this as well. We remove these here as well. And I think with that, we are done. So import.net.js, then we check if we are actually running this in the browser and then we, uh, well, do some other .NET magic. All right, get the config. This is something we write in the page. So this is nothing fancy really. And then we run main and I would call run main and exit. All right, I think that's okay. And now back to the program CS. Now this is getting interesting. Again, we uh, pretty much use the example here in the, in the blog post. So this is something we will use and together with the code from this repository here, 
All right, so let's just do this, but maybe uh, type this really. So line by line, maybe that way we get a better understanding of multi-threading in the browser now. So the first thing that I want to do is first, we already run or write into the console, hello browser. This is actually the main thread, right? So the very first thread. We can also do something like this. So hello browser. And then let's say from the main thread. And then we say thread. Wait, there's the dollar sign missing. Thread. And then current thread. And then managed. Come on, manage. Let me just close the solution explorer. Managed thread ID. And we now need not system. Yes, system system threading it is using system threading. All right, so this is what we want to do. And I would say again, let's just run this. And let's open the browser again. And maybe this already works. Hello browser from the main thread one. Okay, this is nice. Let's not worry about the fab icon here. This now works, but what if we now want to create a new thread? Well, because you have seen this thing here in the blog post. Where is it now? I don't find it anymore. There it is. Uh, we actually have to enable threads, right? So let's try this first without enabling threads back to Visual Studio. And first, what we want to do is we want to actually run a method that is then running through a for loop 30,000 times, for instance, and then uh, also logging something into the console. And after that, or while it's running the for loop, we also want to uh, run another function that is logging something into the console. All right, I hope you get the idea, but when when we when you just pay attention now and stay with me, I think you will get what I mean. So first let's write the method here. Static void it is, and let's call this run me first because I want to run this method first. And here now we say console write line, and then again, dollar, Hello from run me first. So we really see what is actually uh, writing this into the console. And again, I want to get the, the current thread ID. So let me just copy this and paste it here. All right. And now the for loop. So for int i is zero, i is less than or smaller than 30,000, let's say plus plus i and in here now something similar actually where we just say ping from run me first and threads so and so okay so that's the first method and then similar to that the the second method let's call this now run me seconds all right and here now, not 30,000 times, just five times maybe, where we then really see what the current value of i is. Come on, i, it is, run me second, and that's it. And additionally, we wanna sleep for a second. So threat, sleep, and then 1,000 milliseconds and I think this should be it already. So static voids and we get hello from run me second thread ID five times. All right, and now let's just run this stuff. Okay, so we call run me first and then run me second. All right, and we build this. Close the terminal. Yeah, let's build this one more time. Build succeeded now. Run this again. 
And now I am really curious what is happening. There we are. We empty the cache and hard reload. And you see, all right, hello browser from the main threads. Hello from run me first and thread one and ping from run me first and thread one. And this is why I did not add the number, the value of I here, because I just wanted to see how many times this is actually uh, written to the console. And when this is done, then we run or we see here now the result of run me seconds. Okay, but now the big magic is what is or what if you want to run this simultaneously kind of parallel. So for that now we can use multi threading and it's done like that new threads. And here now we write the name of this method and then call start. And actually the very same thing we can do here. And here we just write run me seconds. Okay. And this should already be the whole magic. Let's close this again and build it. And now I'm actually expecting an error because we haven't enabled multi-threading yet, but let's just see what will happen. Yeah. Okay. So there you see it throw if no thread start. So this is not working. So let's go back to uh, so that you can see here, this is the blog post, wasm enable threads should be set to true. Where is it? There's Visual Studio. So real quick to the project file. Yeah, why not? And here now, wasm enable threads, set this to true format and save it one more time. Again, let's just uh, stop this and close it, build the application, run this. And now drum roll thing is that it might be the case that the logging does not really work properly. So we do not really see second by second that something is logging and maybe we see the result in the end, but the, we will see a big difference, I hope. So let's just uh, reload the the, the site here and yeah, see something is actually happening. So we saw run me first, run me first, and then ping one from run me second. I don't know what Chrome is actually doing here. I tested this a couple of times and some, maybe it's just my machine, but sometimes it really worked that you can see the counting and then a second later you see ping one. So approximately a second later and after that, then again, you see the, the, the counting of the first loop and then again, ping two and so on. I think you get what I mean. And uh, when we refresh this, well, it, it kind of works, but the important thing here is, I know it's not that impressive. This, this is strange, right? So that you, all of a sudden you see two, three and four, but the very important thing here is that now we are actually not blocking the main thread we are creating a new thread and that's why we see ID two here. And then also another thread uh, with ID three and only the main thread, as you can see here, hello browser from the main thread has got the ID one. And now I just can encourage you to play around with this. We've got four threads total. So four web workers that are doing this whole work here. And when you create a fifth one, then the first one will be, well, it, it has to be terminated. Uh, there can be a case where you want to create too many threads at once, then you will get an error again. But this is in essence how this stuff works. And again, I really encourage you to have a look at the, uh, at the community standup video where Alexei Lambda Geek is showing you two more demos uh, with ray tracing and math stuff. So really, really impressive stuff. I will also push this to GitHub so that you can have a look. And uh, yeah, I know m maybe it's not that impressive for you. Please tell me in the comments, multi-threading in the browser. This is something, well, it can be really interesting. It can also be really boring <laughs> and confusing. So I would really like to, to get your, your, your thoughts about this. Please write it down in the comments. And uh, yeah, check out the, really, I have to emphasize this, check out the community stand-up video. And if you want, of course, the GitHub repository to play around with this on your machine. So there you have it, multi-threading, 
WebAssembly in the browser, crazy stuff, right? Maybe my demo is not that impressive. Then again, I just want to navigate you to the community standup where Alexei Lambda Geek is showing you some ray tracing and math magic with multiple threads. Great stuff. Please have a look there. Spread the word. It is coming, guys. I think with .NET 8, we will get this in Blazor WebAssembly. And this then is really amazing. Just think about, I don't know, getting lots of data from a web API and your data grid is taking some time to render this. Even if it's one second, this is a bad user experience for the actual user when he or she cannot click something else or just, you know what I mean? You get this feeling that the browser is freezing, not responding anymore, and you can fix this then with multiple threading so this is something i think already can be really really great and apart from that of course typical stuff like calculating anything math related or maybe games in the browser ray tracing as we've seen in the community setup this is then also possible with multi-threading without uh, well freezing or even uh, crashing the browser so i hope you liked it if so then please guys as always does make a difference the like button and subscribing to my channel maybe thank you very very much and for more .NET in your inbox and upcoming online courses about .NET 7 and blazor then maybe you want to subscribe to my newsletter i would really appreciate that or you just hang out here a little bit stay on my channel check out the videos here on the site and with that you get lots and lots of knowledge about .NET and blazor and we can get to know each other a bit better right and become best friends so thank you again very much for watching thank you so much for your time and i hope i see you next time take care